Hey, it's Deborah Atkinson, founder of Flipping 50, and I'm gonna do a Q&A session using questions that we've had pouring in, gathered from here and from other social sites and from our email subscribers right now about metabolism, menopause, and strength training and where that all fits in. So, total disclosure and transparency, this is the very last day. As I'm doing this, June 30th, this is the last day to get in on our Stronger 12-week program. The start, July 1st, goes through September 28th. That means you've got 12 weeks, 90 days, actually a little padding, to do 24 workouts. It's a 12-week program, twice weekly. If you're on the fence, my job here is to help you get off the fence. Decide yes or decide no, not right now. This isn't it. Or I'm doing something else that is working and I've answered your questions about whether it's the most appropriate for you. That's my goal. And I want to really answer these questions because I believe you probably will have them too. So when it comes to any discussion about menopause or metabolism, fat gain, muscle loss, lack of muscle tone is not far behind. It's what we're talking about. And that's your evidence probably that you've lost some metabolism. So if you're getting on your scale, my hope for you is that you no longer, you never, ever, never, ever, 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 it's a lot of evers, are using just a scale that tells you body weight, that you're using one that gives you body fat. And you can either do math or you may have an even more intelligent smart scale that's telling you, here's your weight, here's your percent body fat, here's the pounds of lean muscle mass that you have right now. And are they 100% completely accurate? No. Does it matter? No. So what's it telling you if it's not calibrated perfectly today is where you're at. It's also next week going to tell you if it's not perfectly calibrated, the change that you've had, and that's the most important piece. You're monitoring, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it staying the same? We need to know that. That feedback, super important. What will you see even before you see the scale change? And when I say scale, I really mean your weight. So if you're only getting on the scale and measuring weight, you have no idea if you think you're successful, you may think, oh yes, cheers, got it. Or you may think I'm unsuccessful because I gained weight. But if you gain lean muscle mass, eventually, if you have fat weight to lose, you will lose it. And you potentially will enjoy your back of the closet clothes. I know you know what I mean. The back of the closet clothes may fit you even if you weigh more, if it's lean and muscular. Muscular, whew, spit that out. So it's super important that you realize muscle is more dense than fat is. It takes up less space. You define your shape by how much muscle you have. It defines the fat will lay on top. We've all got that subcutaneous, meaning just under the skin fat that covers the muscle. What we don't want is fat that is internal, inside of the muscle, like marbled steak used to be in the 70s and 80s. We definitely don't want that here in the belly, the visceral belly fat. Strength training can change all that. But let's come back to your questions. So remember that ultimately the answer to these questions and getting better results is you doing strength training for adequate stimulus to the muscle. And here's why. The question that I got is why does muscle loss happen? And, and really that question from you went on to say, why does muscle loss happen for some people and not for others? It probably happens for everyone to some degree. So even me, I've been lifting weights for 38 years pretty consistently, unless I was suffering from an injury and that just wasn't possible. That hasn't happened very much, but I probably don't have quite as much lean muscle tissue as I did when I was 25 because you and I peaked at age 25. Now I've been doing strength training and somebody said to me the other day, you've been working hard at it. And I don't have to say, no, I haven't really. I've just had a lifestyle different than a lot of people. It's not hard work. It's hard work, I think, to be sick or frail or weak or unhealthy or lack in lack energy, not sleep. Those things, I think, are hard. For me, having a lifestyle where I exercise regularly and lift weights in a way that stimulates muscle, that's so 
not hard, right? It's like brushing your teeth or flossing. Hard for me to remember it, not hard to do it. So there is a difference in what you perceive as hard. And I found it very interesting. That was actually a private client who gave me that. So if you're watching right now, you know who you are. Love you, <laughs> support you, said with respect, okay? But it is, what kind of thought do we have about this whole lifestyle thing, right? What is hard? All right, why does muscle loss happen? So it happens specifically for women in midlife and why we're talking about this is as we begin to change and decline in our estrogen levels, that has the biggest factor, the biggest piece of the pie for women and muscle versus fat is estrogen or estradiol specifically. So that as that comes down, what we know now is it's a stimulus, not just for bone, which we've known for decades, but also for muscle. So if we suddenly, we don't have that, you have to make up for that somehow. Many women will look at hormone replacement, but here's my belief, whether you choose, yes, I want to, I wanna consider that, or no, I don't, and if you are going to, I highly suggest you understand the difference between HRT and bioidentical HRT, and you're not looking at synthetics. That's a whole nother con concept, okay? But let's talk about what if you choose to do it naturally, and shouldn't we, who choose to look at how can I get more help and get that boost that lifestyle changers are not doing? You still need to, how do I prioritize for nutrition? right to optimize my estrogen and we've got a great friend in our community magdalena was lucky with hormones balance you should check that out and the exercise that you choose to do no longer at midlife during menopause will serve you the same way it may have when you were 20 because you don't have the same amount of estrogen or testosterone a growth hormone things that are required to build muscle so we will lose it, but here's the thing. The statement in all of the research says, only if you're not doing specific muscle stimulating exercise, only if you couple that lack of muscle stimulating exercise with a loss of your hormones, then you will have that suffering of metabolism, but it's not mandatory. It's actually a choice that you're making intentionally or unintentionally. If I say intentionally, if you know strength training is the key and the secret. If you don't know and you're doing Pilates and yoga thinking this is weight bearing or my doctor told me to go walking to stimulate muscle, it's not enough. As we get older, we are meant to move. And as we get older, if we stop doing that, we will lose muscle. We will lose strength. We will lose stamina, muscle endurance. We will get weaker. We will tend to fall. We will fall. We'll have bed rest. We'll get weaker. You see the spiral. It happened to my mother. I'm sure for some of you, it happened to yours. And now we can look at that and say, look, we, we don't have a great example. We don't have a great example of what happens for someone who lifts heavier weights long into their life. Think about it, my mom was 95, she never did that. She never, number one, lifted weights, okay? Beyond maybe those, those red handheld weights that you use when you're walking, never. And we, first of all, not lifting weights at all. Second of all, lifting heavy enough. So thinking that we need to start taking it easy, we shouldn't lift a heavy weight wrong 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 we actually need to stimulate more overload more stimulus to the muscle means the muscle muscle gets stronger in recovery super important that you keep that in mind so why do we lose muscle so as we age for women we lose that estradiol and our testosterone and growth hormone also come down but for us the biggest stimulator and the biggest changes occur during perimenopause as estradiol starts to come down and tank we'll notice weight gain or lack of the benefit of the exercise that we used to do that used to work so that's why it happens doesn't have to happen why is there a gain of fat or loss of muscle tone even though large studies Two that I've shared over time, multiple times, large studies show no correlation with menopause and a slowing of metabolism or weight. We've seen back in August of 2021 published studies telling us 
metabolism actually holds steady. And yet, since that time, newly published articles and studies, I have read quoting physicians saying that metabolism slows. Here's why it slows in the 40s. We've got to stop listening to those messages. You've got to do one of these. Not getting in here. Not, not, not because those doctors are not paying attention. Some of them are just passing along things they've said for decades. You and I do it. It's how rumors get started, right? So we've got to give them a little credit. They're not in the exercise world. They're not privy to that unless they themselves are probably in it paying a little bit more attention. And these things are really, really important for you to be aware of. What are you paying attention to? Because what you believe is based on what you're thinking, what you've thought potentially for a very long time. And that kind of puts a feeling into you. If you feel like weight training is just not for you because it never was encouraged for women to do, that's potentially a roadblock for you. So you gotta look at that one. What can you do about it? If you have, you are experiencing a change of weight, a redistribution of your weight, your waistline. I, I was shopping yesterday and I was looking at a dress or a pair of shorts actually because dresses are easier. Shorts actually that define the waistline. My thought process in looking at a pair of shorts was at one point I would have grabbed those because I wanted to emphasize that I had a waistline and now I don't, I still have one, right? But it's just not, I don't want something hugging my waist. It's, it's a difference in a field. Y'all know what I mean? Give me a little love here because that was being really vulnerable if you're still watching, right? But things shift just a little bit. They do change, they redistribute. You have far more control of your body shape and proportion from strength training. You can remodel, you can redefine, you can reproportion and it will happen naturally. You, you're not going to focus on the core and exercise for the core to get a smaller core. That's not how it works. Imagine it. If you want to get a bigger bicep, you're going to do bicep exercises. We sometimes don't stop and think that if you want a smaller core, uh, doing more core is actually going to backfire on you. And it does for a lot of women, right? Incorrectly training will get you the opposite results as you want. So what can you do about it? We need to pick up where the estrogen left off. Something has to fill this hole. And we can't just leave it to what our hormones and body want to do because what they want to do is as estrogen comes down, cortisol will go up. All right, that's not good because this was estrogen, a buildup of muscle, an anabolic stimulant. Cortisol is a catabolic stimulant meaning it's breaking down. So first of all, we need to hug more people. We need to feel gratitude more often to help decrease our cortisol levels because if oxytocin and dopamine and feel good hormones come out more frequently, cortisol and these feel good hormones can't be up. So increase them, hug, even sex, yep. Pet your pets, all those things. Increase this, will decrease that. That'll help you're still gonna have to pick up a weight. So if you were hoping, not so much, okay? We still do need strength training and we need not to simply go and use the reformer, not to do mat work, not to just use body weight on the mat. Those things are very helpful for realigning the body, for decreasing stress levels, for increasing and enhancing your mobility and flexibility but they will not stimulate your muscle or your bone beyond a certain point. If you came off the couch and you began doing those things, are you going to increase your lean muscle a little bit and increase your tone and stamina and your bone density a little bit? If you keep doing those things and only those things, will you increase it anymore? No, you have to have the strength training. So. I encourage you to do what it takes to start, start small, keep going, make it doable, but then look at ultimately, I will be someone who lift weight, lifts weights regularly. That's really important. So the strength training that you do 
adequate stimulus, meaning you're reaching muscular fatigue by a certain number of repetitions. And I'll share that with you. Ultimately, it's 10 or fewer if you can. If you can't, we actually have tricks so that you can. We can slow it down. We can use or employ something called tempo training meaning instead of a one to two seconds to push and a slowly lowering that weight in three to four seconds, we might go slowly out more time under tension. It's gonna make whatever weight I might be holding in my hands right now heavier, I promise you. Try it for yourself. <laughs> and you're gonna come back even slower and you're gonna stop right here and hold it. My muscles are still on if I'm holding that weight, right? Tempo training is one way to overcome maybe an old injury, prior problem, or a, an arthritis or fibromyalgia issue that you know kicks up when you're using too heavy of a weight. And you may find that training slowly, using tempo training allows you to then get better results and be able to actually lift heavier. Okay, when is the best time to start strength training? For women specifically, as young as you possibly can, but we're no longer teenagers or in our 20s or in our 30s. So if you happen to be here watching or you're sharing this with your daughter, that is the best time. Why? Because when we get to perimenopause, that point where we can track your periods are changing a little bit, they're no longer that regular, regular, regular. Maybe it's a day late, it's a day early, it's a, it lasts a day longer, or a day shorter all kinds of changes occur for women or you experience those night sweats now that you know to look for them and you realize, oh, I know what that was. I know what that was now, right? I had to go back in my memory and think about, huh, that's what that was, right? Because it wasn't a big enough deal and it wasn't consistent or frequently enough, but there are those signs. What I want you to do is to not expect them. There's 34 signs of menopause and you're reading in way too many places these are signs of menopause. These are symptoms you're going to experience. Ha! Don't plant that seed. You don't have to go there. What we know about strength training, for instance, is women who have more lean muscle mass have fewer vasomotor problems, meaning they don't experience hot flashes or night sweats either as frequently, intensely, or maybe at all. The more fit you are arriving at menopause and going through that, the smoother your journey is going to be. Now, we still have genetics. If you didn't pick your parents wisely, you're still gonna have a little expression of what your own personal journey is about. But your diet is also gonna play a point. I remember a very short period of time when I realized that when it's really hot and I'm having my morning coffee at the time, that could actually trigger this feeling. And, and again, it's like, is that a hot flash? Like, is that what that is? <laughs> you know, and you have to ask because you've never had it before. It's like a contraction when you're pregnant. It's like, is that what that is? I don't know. I've had nine months to think about it, but even so, it feels different, new. Similarly, but those kinds of things, not just hot or warm liquids, but also sugar, having processed foods, more chemicals in your food, eating too high of a carbohydrate content because it's some of that metabolizes as sugar. All of those things can trigger more symptoms. You don't have to have them. You can avoid them. It is really important that you're thinking about that. So the best time to start strength training is when you're a teenager and then keep it going the rest of your life so that you're not learning a new skill. You're not a fish out of water because I get it. If you're here with me, you've never really strength trained. Now's the time to start. That's the second best time right now, today, this week, not next week when it's convenient, when you're back, when you're, you know, no longer a caregiver or when this or that is happening, but now doing what you can in the limited time that you may have in realistic time, that's the best time to start. So post menopause, that lasts forever until you die. So if you go through menopause at 56, you know, until you are, are you gonna go for triple digits? I don't know, but it could last that long. You're still going to be impacted and influenced by the hormones as they changed you and as you influence them. 
You can influence your testosterone. You can influence your growth hormone. You can influence your melatonin. You can influence what results you get if you do HRT or if you're not and you're trying to do it naturally by the exercise type and timing. And type, I include not just strength training versus cardio versus yoga, but I include the intensity that you're using. We need intensity now at midlife and later more than we ever have in life. We hear too few stories of positive aging because no one older than us really was lifting weights heavy enough and considering that to be a right thing. You can start. So I want to go backward and start talking about what is menopause, because a lot of women will wonder. Our program, our stronger programs, and all of the things inside of our membership or our courses are built based on research on women in menopause. So I have a lot of women say to me, I'm not in menopause yet, I, I'm in my 40s, so is it still okay for me? So let's get really clear, what is pre-menopause? Like you're not in it yet, you're having babies, or you could. You're using birth control of some sort, habits, whatever, that prevent that from happening because you're in your reproductive years. Nothing really has changed yet. For women, sometimes it's late 30s, it's early 40s, you start to begin to experience their fluctuations in your energy level in the way that you experience your periods and the timing of those periods. There are a lot of little hints that come and tell you you're now in perimenopause. But often, and I like to do this as well, there's early perimenopause when you're clueless. Like you don't know things are changing. You may, you know, still be just feeling fine. I was really until I was about 49. And then I piled on to hormonal changes that we know were happening under the hood. A lot of stressors, like eight in a 14 month period. That will spin you in a different direction, right? And the end stage, so there's early perimenopause, don't know what's happening, there's late stage perimenopause. And that is when you're really transitioning, you're probably skipping periods. Maybe you've gone six months without one, but a lot of women will then have a period. And you're kind of back to square one, you know, because menopause literally is that moment 12 months from your last period. Very few women get to six months and then don't have another one. It, you, it just doesn't happen like that. It's so important that you realize it's gonna you know, ebb and wane a little bit. And that point where it has been 12 months, that doesn't make you completely immune either, depending on what you're doing, taking different supplements, adjusting your HRT could cause a breakthrough period when you haven't had one for a while. But there are women who've said, my doctor swears that it's six months. Because what your doctor is saying is that your hormones have tanked enough. There may be a research, but that you may wanna look at what are these changes in lifestyle habits you wanna observe now more than ever, or do you wanna consider HRT as a help for keeping your muscle, for keeping your bone density, and for your energy, your sleep, and for a lot of women, it's also about skin and brain health also benefiting. So not a persuasive argument for HRT, but that's why a doctor might be more conscious about it and be cautious for you because bone density is such an issue. It's like, why would we let you lose it? If we know this is where you are, let's be proactive and what, what can we do for prevention? Post-menopause then is that moment you hit that 12 months, everything thereafter. So it's like, blip. I'm in menopause and now I'm in post, right? So we're still gonna be affected by our hormones and our habits and what we've done based on our muscle and our bone and our brain health. We're gonna be affected by how well we're able to sleep and insulin and cortisol still are calling the shots. Our sex hormones during menopause got our attention, but they made cortisol and insulin just bigger players in the master hormone game. So it's important that you realize that. All right, so there's your description of menopause, how that fits in, and what exercise really should be and look like. Heavier strength training or, or regular strength training, heavier strength training as you can 
During perimenopause, you may experience more challenges with fatigue and sleep and hot sweats, night, night sweats, hot flashes that disrupt sleep, disrupt your energy level. So you're potentially time to be careful and cautious so you're not pushing the adrenal fatigue. You're allowing yourself to recover, listening to your body when you need to, trying to maintain a regular activity level. It's then, after, when things smooth out, the hormones are not so volatile, you actually will work harder. You can work harder, you will have more energy, you've stabilized in your sleep, and that's the time where you do not want things to fall off. It's not what you've witnessed before in your life, but it is the thing that will actually keep you healthier for life. So, so very important. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions about the program. So the 12 week program starts July 1st, almost on us right now, and goes through September 28th. You have access to the program and the videos during that time. You're not buying videos and a lifetime membership, and there is a method to that madness. I am an exercise psychologist. So I am a behavior change specialist, and for 38 years, here's what I've watched as there are these lifetime access, there's a lifetime membership, there's, there is unlimited use. Those programs, those memberships get used least of all of anything. Why? Total transparency, because there's no urgency. It's not gonna disappear, you're gonna have it. And so for that reason, we think, well, I don't need to do that right now, because it'll be there. Not a good idea. So if I give you a bottle of medicine and I say, you know, here's the ideal, you take it with breakfast and lunch and dinner three times until the bottle is done, if your doctor gives you that and you're not feeling good, you're gonna take it, right? Or you get to the close to the bottom and you're feeling better, we're very tempted not to take the rest of it, but we've learned that if we do that, we are more likely to get sick again and get the exposure again because we haven't totally strengthened our immune system. Am I right? Similarly with exercise. If you don't take it in the right dose on a daily or in exercise on a weekly basis, it is the dose and stimulus relationship. So the frequency of that dose gives you the good results or not the lack thereof. Now, here's for you who are busy and or sometimes you're gardening or you're golfing all day long. If you miss a workout because you're active, you're moving, that's the reason you exercise. So don't be thinking, oh, I missed my workout, I feel so guilty. No, no, no. We exercise so that we're good and we're ready for the energy. We have the strength and endurance and stamina to do those things. So you wanna kind of back off and be wise about what am I doing? And if I were to, golf those 36 holes and work out, do my weights, I would be actually pushing myself under because it'd be really hard to keep up with the energy intake and eat enough to overcome all of that. It's really important for you to realize, don't throw yourself under the bus, allow yourself to have active other days as well that you don't pile the exercise on. You have access in the program to 12 workouts, you have one a week, new and first and second workout will be very different because you're getting used to it. You also have the cheat sheets for each workout, but here's the difference between this and other programs. This is based on research of women just like you who are in some stage of perimenopause or postmenopause, knowing that we need that stimulus, we need that overload. And these studies have proven positively to have an advantage for muscle, growth and or fat burning or fat loss or both as well as bone density. Now, most studies that are out there, research studies, are based on young athletic males, peak of muscle mass. We are at 55, say on average, more at peak of fat storage. Our bodies are easier storing fat than they are burning it. So we can't compare what worked for a young athletic male even our young athletic selves to what will work now. We've used science and we've done it for nine years now. 
Not only does the science work, but we've proven in our programs that it works as long as you're eating adequate amount to build lean muscle stimulus. If you're trying to diet while you're lifting weights, you will probably struggle. You'll just have this catch 22. You may gain strength, but you may not change your body composition. So very important to keep in mind. There you have it. My best advice to you, no matter what program you are doing, is that you're looking at your body composition. Measure on a scale. When you go into your bathroom, ideally you're looking at not just your weight, because that doesn't tell the whole story. It tells very little of the story, in fact. So yes, look in the mirror, do measurements, fantastic. But within all of our budgets, you will find a smart scale that'll tell you your weight and your percent body fat. And you wanna be looking at that and ideally at your lean muscle mass. We can figure that out, it's just a little math and I've got you. All right, if you have questions after watching this, I know it's long, but this is 30 minutes for explaining menopause, metabolism, and the positive influence that strength training can be, and that can help you for the rest of your life. So 31 minutes, probably not a lot to ask. All right, I will see you on the flip side. I will put the link below to the Stronger Program. Today is the last day to register, and I hope to see you inside and stronger.